Welcome back. We're going to talk about oxygen administration now using a non-rebreather mask. One of the things that you're going to find yourself doing a lot in your career is putting patients on oxygen via nasal cannula or a non-rebreather. So one of the things that we want to do is we want to prepare our skill station to make sure that we're ready to go. We want to make sure that we have all the equipment that we're going to need for that skill station. First thing that we're going to need is our oxygen bottle. We want to make sure that we have a good amount of oxygen in that bottle. Next, we want to make sure that we have our regulator. We're going to have to hook this regulator up to our bottle. Next thing that we've got to do is make sure that we have a good oxygen delivery device. For this skill station, we're going to be using the non-rebreather. Of course, always, you want to make sure that you have your stethoscope so you can listen to the patient's breath sounds, and you always want to make sure that you come into the skill station with the appropriate personal protective equipment. So as you enter the skill station, the first thing that you want to do is you want to verbalize that you have good PPE. So you come into the skill station, you're going to say, I'm wearing my gloves. And for the purposes of our skill station, you always wear your gloves. You never simulate that. The next thing that you're going to want to do is you want to gather your equipment. So we want to make sure that we have a good oxygen bottle. The next thing that we want to do is just for the sake of making sure that there's oxygen in it, we just want to go ahead and crack the valve to make sure that there's a flow of oxygen out of the stem. Now this does a couple things. One, it lets you know that there's oxygen in the bottle before you hook the flow meter up or the regulator up. Secondarily, what it does as well is it kind of kicks out any little critters or any little dust mites that may be in the hole where you're gonna connect the valve to. You don't wanna go ahead and clog your O2 regulator as you're now pushing that dust or any, any debris contamination that may be in that hole. So the next thing that we wanna be able to do at this point is we wanna go ahead and crack the cylinder to make sure that we have a good flow and we wanna go ahead and attach the regulator to the bottle. There's a couple sides here. You notice that there's a, a side that has one hole and then two smaller holes. And then there's the other side that has kind of a divot or a pivot in there, whatever you want to call it. If you look at your regulator heel, you notice that there are kind of two spikes here. Well, those two spikes go into those two holes. And then you want to screw the bottle in to make sure that it's secure. Now, one of the things that I want to caution you on here is that these bottles usually come filled with about 2,000 PSI. And I have to tell you that if you drop this bottle and if the valve breaks off, this now becomes a really great projectile. There was one time that I was putting one of those big oxygen cylinders into an ambulance and I accidentally dropped it. And that uh, valve hit the, the ambulance, broke the valve off, and now this bottle that had 2,500 PSI went skidding across the road and actually wedged into the wheel well of another ambulance. So we have to make sure that those don't become projectiles. So now that we've went ahead and connected the O2 regulator to the bottle, we checked to make sure that there was a good amount of volume so we can deliver it to the patient. Make sure that there's no leaks in the valve. Remember, you had to seat this regulator correctly. You had to put those two prongs into those two holes and you had to snug this down. The next thing that you want to be able to do is you want to go ahead and attach the non-rebreather. So as you open the non-rebreather, you want to go ahead and extend it out. You want to go ahead and connect the tubing to the bottle. You want to go ahead and turn the bottle on to 15 liters of oxygen. The next thing you want to do is you want to be able to fill the reservoir bag. The way you do that is you just hold the inlet valve and what that's going to do is it's going to allow the bag to inflate. Now that your bag's inflated, you want to make sure that you have the right amount of oxygen pressure that you're going to use. For a non-rebreather, it's 10 to 15 liters per minute. After you've done that, you want to go ahead and put the non-rebreather onto the patient. You want to go ahead and secure the rubber band around the head. And just like when you're flying in the airline, you want to go ahead and snug this down to make sure the patient has a good fit. You notice that there's a little metal band here as well. 
one of the things you want to do is you just want to kind of pinch that around the nose to create a seal. Now don't crimp that down too tight because you'll make it uncomfortable for the patient. But this is now how you're going to give oxygen administration via non-rebreather. Now that you've been through the skill, let's take a look at the critical criteria for this skill. When you're participating in a skill evaluation, you will be given points for each of the steps of the skill that you complete. Note that failure to adequately complete any one of the critical criteria will cause you to fail that particular skill examination, regardless of your overall points scored. Go ahead and take out your National Registry skill sheet and follow along with me. Here's the critical criteria for this skill. Failure to take and verbalize appropriate PPE precautions. Failure to assemble the oxygen tank and regulator without leaks. Failure to pre-fill the reservoir bag on the non-rebreather. Failure to adjust the oxygen flow rate to the non-rebreather mask of at least 10 liters per minute. Failure to ensure a tight mask seal to the patient's face. Failure to manage the patient as a competent EMR. Exhibit unacceptable effect with patients or other personnel uses or orders a dangerous or inappropriate intervention. Please remember that this video is intended to help you prepare for the National Registry Psychomotor Skills Examination and the approach may not exactly match protocols used in a different context. It's important, however, that you memorize each step of the skill in order. This way you're able to demonstrate the skill to your instructor, preceptor, and evaluator.